in here in the right hand corner is the Trinity and it is really sad that so many people do not understand this that they just can't grasp the ideal that our Heavenly Father has many titles he also gives us these titles in the form of the Father or our Heavenly Father and we have the Son the only begotten Son of God which is Jesus Christ our Lord we also have the Holy Spirit or the Comforter these are the three aspects that he has given us specific to teach us about the full Godhead and this is for our discernment this is not limiting our Heavenly Father but this is who he has shown us in his word that he is and he's given us these three aspects of himself so we can understand his word because it is a teacher and he's teaching us his children he's teaching us about himself okay so we go further and we have I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here the two advents of our Lord Jesus Christ first he was born of the Virgin Mary in Isaiah 7, Matthew 1, Luke 1, 2, 3, uh, the book of John, John 1 and 3, I left out 1. We had the book of Hebrews, especially chapter 9, and then we also have the book of Jude, among other scriptures that foretell of our Lord's coming. His great sacrifice for our sins on the cross, he was the Passover lamb, the death of the lamb on the cross is foretold in the Old Testament we have those three feasts that our Heavenly Father tells us to always remember it's the Passover and then it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread the leaven of the Pharisees was their false doctrines we had the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost that happens 50 days later that's when the Holy Spirit came the Comforter. This is after Christ's resurrection was when the Comforter came, that Holy Spirit. Then we have the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Dwelling Places, the Feast of the Ingathering. That's what, you know, that terminology means. The Dwelling Place, God dwells with us. This is the birth of our Lord was at the beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles. That would have been in the seventh month on the 15th day. These were given to us for a memorial so we would remember them. Remember, they all tie in to our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as that Savior sent, the Holy One. He is all of these things right here, the righteous judge. There's so many more that can be added in here. Then we go into the second advent of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he returns to earth it will be at the seventh and last trump we learn this let me slide this over go back and review Matthew 24 Luke 21 Mark 13 2nd Thessalonians 2 these are on topic of his return there's no confusion here false Christ comes at the sixth seal six trump six vial True Christ doesn't return until the seventh. That's at the seventh trump. That's the last trump. That means it comes after. Our Lord comes after Satan is revealed in his role as Antichrist instead of Christ. He returns as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He defeats and binds Satan who is revealed, who is disguised in his false Christ, Messiah, God role. He's going to bind him for a thousand years. That's a millennium. And our Lord Jesus is going to restore his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And when our Lord gets here, heaven comes with him. So anyway, he returns to earth. We're not flying away anywhere. Our Lord returns here. He goes to the Mount of Olives and going to go through that eastern gate, Mount Zion. And we learn this in 1 Corinthians 15, and that's 50 through 53, Revelation 11. After those two witnesses are killed and they lie in the street for three and a half days, 
That's when our Lord returns. That's when the seventh trump sounds. That's when he returns. We also see it in uh, Revelation 14. This is that harvest. 19 is when our Lord returns on a white horse. And his armies will be with him. All those who have already died in Christ will come with him. As we learn in 1 Thessalonians 4. You know, we can't precede them. Those of our ancestors that love the Lord, they're, they're already there. They're coming with him. But those who remain up to the last trump, they shall be gathered to the Lord at the last trump when he returns to earth. Then in Revelation 20, that's when we see the millennium. This is that thousand years where those that didn't make it, then become part of that first resurrection. They will be taught in the millennium. Okay, now I'm going to zoom back out, and I'm going to scroll this upwards. So we have this pattern. See, everything on the left is in dealings with Satan or sin. Everything on the right deals with our, our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, righteous. Okay, so we come down here, and then this, both sides, good and bad, leads us to the judgment seat of Jesus Christ some for punishment or some for rewards the good and the bad will be judged at the judgment seat those who did not overcome those who took the mark of the beast they are going to be over in what is called hell hell is the full knowledge of God this is in your spiritual body because let me let me go back over here we need to zoom in right here. Move this over. Where are the dead? 1 Thessalonians 4. Do you believe that Christ died and resurrected? Well, in 1 Corinthians 15, we have different bodies. In 2 Corinthians 5, 5 through 9, to be, uh, we have the present and absent from the Lord. If you're present with the Lord, you're with the Lord. When you're absent from the Lord is to be in your flesh body here on earth. The flesh body dies, as we learn in Ecclesiastes 12, 6 through 7. When that silver cord breaks, the clay pot, flesh body time is over. Your soul, your inner spirit, your spiritual body, you just, you know, it's like you just re release from that clay pot and you return to our Heavenly Father who made it. Every soul also bears their own inequity. So if you sin, you're going to be held accountable for it on Judgment Day uh, when we're at the seat of Christ. Good or bad. Reward or punishment. And also, there's all this uh, reincarnation. We're all only appointed once to be born of water of the womb of woman in the flesh. One time. Just once. And we can learn this in Hebrews 9, 24 through 28. And then it also goes back to when it all began, the time to be born in flesh, Genesis 1.26. And from this point, we go to the judgment seat of Jesus Christ, the good and the bad. There is a separation between the good and the bad at this point, heaven or hell, or paradise and hell. Going to Luke 16, verse 1, we see right here that our Lord Jesus Christ is talking to the disciples, and further into the chapter, we also see where the Pharisees also play a part. But he's talking about the stewardship. And this is really important when we go in and start trying to discern this, uh, certain, this certain rich man and the beggar, which is Lazarus. Uh, in reference to the rich man being on the wrong side of the gulf. But anyway, we're going to scroll down. See, here's where the Pharisees pop in. And uh, they were covetous. And they're not understanding what he's talking about, the stewardship. But our Lord is going to go in here and he's going to say, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And here on the right hand side, uh, this is a depiction of this certain rich man. And here is Lazarus in the gate. 
And you can see that the rich man had, you know, had his own servants. He was being well taken care of, eating, one, uh, everything, you know, the best of everything. Verse 20, And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. He was a leper. 21, and designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Verse 22, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and he was buried. Verse 23, and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom see down here on the right hand bottom this would be Abraham and this would be Lazarus and here's the gulf this this divide right here separation and here's the rich man He's not actually burning with fire on him, but this is the torment. This is a description of the torment that he is, uh, has full knowledge of the Lord, and he can see Father Abraham and Lazarus, who is a, 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 a poor leper who ate the crumbs from his table, is over there with, with the Lord, and he's over here in, this, in torment. And this word hell is a very interesting word. Uh, there's some scriptures here that you might want to go back to, but I'm going to take this into the Strong's real quick, and we'll look at this word, hell. It's the Greek, 86, and it's Hades. So that's another word for it. It says it's from G1 and G1492, properly unseen. That is, Hades are the place or state of departed souls. Hell is also another word for the grave. So, I mean, he's in the grave, he's dead, he's buried. Let's go to Isaiah 14, because this is in reference to Lucifer. Uh, he wants to be the morning star, but he's not. Talking to our Heavenly Father talking to Lucifer, telling him about being brought down to hell. Uh, hell in the Hebrew is Sheol. It says, from Hades, or the world of the dead, let me move this down, as if a subterranean retreat, including its accessories and inmates. That's the grave, hell, pit, the bottomless pit. And Satan is that king of the bottomless pit. You know, he's the one that is on that wrong side over here. But hell, is, that's what we're talking about. It's the world of the dead, the spiritually dead. They're in spiritual body, but they're, they are spiritually dead. In other words, their flesh body is in the grave. They are released from the confines of this garment, this skin garment. And they go back to the Lord. And then we have the gulf at the judgment seat of Christ. They either go in hell or they are accepted to the Lord and they are with the Lord in paradise. Okay, let's go back to Luke 16, uh, verse 23. And in hell, this is the rich man, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And also, another thing to consider is that the word death, death is Satan. That's another name for him. So to follow Satan, it, it leads to death. It leads to a spiritual death. End up in Hades, or Sheol, or hell, uh, on the wrong side of the gulf. But then, after Satan is loose that little season, once he's bound by our Lord Jesus Christ at his second advent, if you follow him that time, then it's over. That's the lake of fire coming at the great white throne judgment. That's to be turned to ashes from within. Poofed, blotted out. Verse 24, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that though in... Thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, 
and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Verse 26, And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So people cannot, they can't get across this gulf. There's a divide there. Verse 27, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Verse 28, For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Verse 29, Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Verse 30, And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Verse 30, And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And our Lord Jesus Christ raised Lazarus from the dead, and they didn't believe him then. They didn't believe our Lord when he rose from the dead either. So, you know, this is a, a double-fold meaning right here. But this explains about this gulf. It cannot cross back and forth. Only our Lord Jesus Christ was able to do this when he, during the time uh, before his resurrection, he went back and he freed many people from the wrong side of the gulf. He freed many prisoners. They believed on his testimony and then they were saved. And we learn this in the book of Peter. This also explains about 1 Corinthians 15 about the different bodies. If you're not familiar with the change of bodies, please go read that and study it because that, uh, the Apostle Paul explains it so we can understand it. Just because we die in the flesh does not mean we are dead. We There's life after death. There's... Uh, we have a spiritual body. Our soul is not condemned to death, the second death, at, at this point, you know, not until the great white throne judgment. And death means to perish totally. That means you're in your immortal spiritual body, full knowledge of God, and turn to ashes. I mean, at that point, if you follow Satan again, that's the second death. That's the lake of fire. Our Heavenly Father is a consuming fire. But we can look around in the world today and there are so many people that are, they're like zombies. They're the walking dead. They're so detached and so far away from our Heavenly Father. They're like the walking dead, spiritually dead. That's just the way it is. It's sad, but we can see it all around us. And our Heavenly Father sees it, and He knows it. In His mercy and grace, He gives us the, the time in the millennium for those that don't make it that the, to the first resurrection, you know, that will have that time of teaching with full knowledge. There will not be no doubt. There won't be no scoffer saying, oh, God doesn't exist, because He will be apparent to all. And it will be only his word being taught. There won't be no, ta no words of men. It will only be our Heavenly Father and his truth being taught. And praise the Lord for that. The confusion that we live in today is so horrible. So hard to filter it all out. And I'm going to post from the Apocrypha, Ezra, chapter 7, and a few verses here. Starting on page 64, I'm just going to post them. You can pause the video and read them. But I just want you to see that there is another prophet that spoke of this gulf and uh, the separation in hell or Hades or the grave, however you want to call it. But uh, we'll go to 65. Sixty-six, 
67. And I apologize for all my highlighting. I did this years ago, but you can still be able to read it all. 68. Page 69. In this word rapture, this is a, an American translation. Uh, this is not a, the right word that should be here. It's probably uh, great exaltation, uh, the glory of him who takes them up. But anyway, just remember that this word is, you know, an English translation. Page 70. And this will be the last page is 70. And I'm, I wish we had this in a translation back in the Strong's where we could look up these words and, you know, to get a a better understanding of it but we don't have access to that since the apocrypha were removed long ago from the Bible but anyway we have this this is an interesting read it just kinda gives us more in depth in reference to uh, hell or Hades that separation by the Gulf from paradise hell is to be separated from God it's when you are in your spiritual body and you're before the judgment seat of Christ and you realize things that you've done wrong. This is that hell. This is that torment and anguish when you realize that you are separated from paradise. And I'm going to zoom in a little more right here. It's like this great gulf right here. To be in hell is to have full knowledge of that separation from God. It, you're in mental torment or anguish, regret, great shame or despair, fear or self-hatred. That's where this goes to when we get to Revelation 20. These are the ones that are spiritually dead. They're not dead dead. They haven't been judged the second death yet. Satan has, but he's the only one. There will be this time of teaching. They didn't make it to the first resurrection. Those who stand with the Lord and overcome the mark of the beast and do not worship that false Christ, they will be part of the first resurrection. They will be appointed teachers during this thousand years. They have full knowledge of eternal life and they'll be with our Heavenly Father. There will be joy and love and happiness forever with the Lord. They are not going to be tested during the second death or that second time frame when Satan is loose a little season, as we learn in Revelation 20. After this time frame, after this thousand years, and remembering that a thousand years is a day with the Lord. So just keep that in mind. But we have this upcoming white throne, the great white throne judgment that will happen at the time of this th when this thousand years is over and Satan is loose that little season this is the one that determines whether you're part of the second resurrection or whether you're you're you know turned to ashes from within or that lake of fire you know uh, hopefully more will get it if they don't get it in the first resurrection here but the lake of fire is to follow Satan again after all his authority, all his power has been removed. If people follow him again while they're in their spiritual body and they have full knowledge of our Heavenly Father, they will perish the second death to be turned to ashes from within, to be blotted out of existence and memory. There's no sadness in heaven. Once all of this done, there will, there will be no tears. So they're blotted out not only of existence, but they're blotted out of our memories also. We will not be sad that they're gone because we won't even remember they existed. Okay, those who overcome, they do not follow Satan again. They will go into the second resurrection. They're not deceived by Satan. They will be forever with the Lord and join those of the first resurrection right here. And all of these will be forever with the Lord. This is eternal life, forever with the Lord. And then we can go into the, the new, new age, that third heaven and earth age or eon of time 
forever with the Lord. So in closing, I hope that you've enjoyed this brief explanation or intro into heaven and hell or paradise and hell. Uh, hell being uh, Gehenna, the garbage pit in the city of Jerusalem is where they took all their refuse, where it was burning all the time. The lake of fire is a different matter. But anyway, we to, to be in hell, even like in the flesh, we are in hell when we are separated from our Heavenly Father. When we are in despair and everything seems to be against us. When um, nothing seems to go right in our life or seem like we have no purpose. These are all part of what you would call hell is to be separated from our Heavenly Father and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And going back to the top of this diagram, I hope it, you're able to visualize this in better detail and understanding. We have the negative side over here on the left. This is the negative side of God's plan. I mean, talking about the king of Assyria, having that rod of God's anger, the punishments, the pestilence, all of these things that our Heavenly Father unleashes on the world. And then we have the bondage, which goes back to that king of Egypt. Then we have the king of Babylon, which is that house of confusion, Babel. You know, when their languages were confused. That's where all of this goes back to. This is the teacher. Our master teacher is our Heavenly Father's word. Then we have the positive side of God's salvation plan. And, I mean, we have the body of Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as the King, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so we have all of these things that are happening in the world today. And these paths are going to lead to the judgment seat of Christ. That judgment day, the day, the great day of the Lord is coming for good and evil. To be, we will be just according to our works. You know, so that's what we're looking at. And that's the way our Heavenly Father's Word is, is divided. It's the way it's set up as a teacher. He used the house, the whole house of Israel, Jacob. He used the tribes as the example to teach us today. And then His Word was scattered abroad. His Word has been spread abroad through these children. And we have it with us. We have the Gospels. We have the full Word of God with us. For us to discern it. Irregardless of what religion is going on or what doctrine, we have His Word to teach us. So use that Word, read that Word, study His Word to understand what is going on and where these paths lead. And, you know, thank God for His great mercies to even have this part here about this thousand years of teaching but you know there's so much confusion and our history has been kept from us uh, the false teachings all of this has been going on our Heavenly Father has great love and mercy much that even at this point at this separation that he still has this last opportunity to uh, make the right choice or be destroyed. It's going to be up to that entity, each entity's chosen path on what they do. Anyway, God bless and I hope that you find that this study has been helpful.